I've had tons of requests from you guys to show exactly how to wire up an e-bike motor controller. So in this video, I'll do just that, and at the end, I'll show you how to tweak some juicy e-bike settings that can unlock the speed limiter and do some other cool stuff as well. If you're new to the channel, then make sure to hit that subscribe button. Motor controllers used in this video will be linked in the description, and let's get started. Now the electric vehicle I'm gonna replace the motor controller is actually a moped. The problem here is that the only way to turn this thing on is by hitting it with my foot. And while it's already on, if I switch it into drive mode, the throttle is not responsive. If you think it's a throttle issue, then you'll soon find out that the throttle still actually works. Now you might be wondering why I'm demonstrating this on an electric moped instead of an e-bike. The answer to that is that this moped is accelerated using a brushless DC motor, just like e-bikes do. And besides that, they also both use the same type of throttle control and brake signal. I'll start by unscrewing the plastic trim in order to get to the motor controller. There seems to be two screws holding the motor controller in place, so I'll go ahead and remove those as well. Once it's pulled out, we can have a look at the label which when I search up the model number, could not find the datasheet or any other wiring diagram. So to keep it simple, I just ordered a new brushless motor controller featuring all the wires we need. It also includes a display for showing the speed, which we will later use to access the e-bike settings. Once it arrived, I can happily announce that the motor controller, throttle and display don't look damaged. But before installing them onto the moped, let me explain how these motor controllers should be connected. And to simplify things, I clamped down an electric scooter motor onto a vise, which will be used instead of the moped's motor. I'll also pull out the battery from the moped to supply power to the system. Starting with the display, which might look complicated at first, having a total of 5 wires. The red and black wire are obviously power, although the red wire is actually the same voltage as the battery. The blue wire is for the display, telling the motor controller when to power on or off. And finally, we have a green and yellow wire communicating between the display and the motor controller, for example how fast the e-bike is moving, or what speed level the motor controller should drive at. When hooking up the display to the motor controller, except if you're not using the included one, connecting this cable to the controller should be plug and play. Moving on to the throttle, which will always have a red wire for 5 volts, a black wire for ground, and a third wire, sometimes green or white, which is ultimately the signal wire, giving us higher voltage the more it is twisted. For example, if we connect a small lithium ion battery to the red and black wire from the throttle, and then connect a multimeter to the black and green wire, we can see the voltage go up the more we twist it. Now in this case we're only getting 2.9 volts instead of about 4 volts, which is okay because we're using a lithium ion battery which has a maximum voltage of 4.2 volts instead of the 5 volts throttles are supposed to get. And when connecting this cable to the motor controller, you can actually see how it uses a white wire for signal while the throttle uses a green one. Next up, we got the motor, and I do have to say that it does not matter what motor you're installing this motor controller on, which is kind of the reason why I'm demonstrating this on a moped. As long as it is a brushless motor, which means it has 3 thick wires, has a cable of at least 5 thin wires, and has the same voltage and wattage as the motor controller. For example, most budget e-bikes, like the one in my previous video, are rated for 250 watts and have a nominal battery voltage of 36 volts. So for that bike, I found a 36 volt motor controller with a maximum power of 250 watts. And in this case, where we have a motor controller rated at 48 volts and 25 amps, by doing the math, we get a total of 1200 watts peak. So for the moped, I got a 1500 watt controller, which is a little higher than 1200 watts, but can later be limited through the display. 
Anyways, the three thick wires are called the phase wires, which are used to power the motor, while the five thin wires are called a hole sensor cable, which is basically used to tell the motor controller in what position it is in. Without connecting the hole sensor wires, some motor controllers are still capable of working, but you won't be able to have the zero start feature, which basically means you won't be able to take off smoothly without pushing yourself off the ground. Also, sometimes these brushless motors can have an extra one or two wires which are usually for reading the temperature or speed but in order to get it to work you only need to connect the red black blue green and yellow wire and it should be good to go to hook up the motor i'll connect the three thick wires color to color and then connect the whole sensor wire color to color as well the final wires from the controller are the two brake wires which basically makes that the power should be cut as soon as you press the brakes there is also a two wire connector that allows you to connect a light. And the last one is a three wire pair called the PAS wire, which can be connected to a pedal assist sensor if your e-bike has one. And now that we have a motor, a throttle and display connected, which is the simplest way of using a motor controller, all we have to do now is connect the battery to the thick red and black wires and it should just work, right? Well, after powering up the display, even though if I'm giving it some throttle, the motor does not want to spin and just makes jittery noises. This is a problem that I've received lots of comments on. But to fix this, we simply have to switch around the phase wires until it starts spinning. This configuration might differ from motor to motor. Perfect. Alright, time to install the controller. I'll start with installing the display, which has a nice design that allows you to install it without removing the handlebar. Next I'll run the wire through the frame, which gave me just enough wire to get it to the controller's location. To remove the old controller, I'll start by pulling some connectors and then unbolt both the phase wires and power wires. And just like that, we now have place for the new controller, which means I can plug in the display followed by connecting the phase and hole sensor wires and then temporarily seal it with some electrical tape. Now when it comes to the throttle, I'll try to keep it simple by using the existing one. But instead of connecting the controller to any random wire, I'll first continuity test them using a multimeter. Doing so can stop the throttle input from accidentally being exposed to a higher voltage than 5 volts, thus preventing the controller from becoming damaged. After that's done, I'll chop off the throttle connector and then hook it up to the wires coming from the throttle. And now that the basics are wired up, I'll extend the power wire with some 14 gauge cable, reinstall the battery, and then give it a first test. Well, as soon as I press the power button, a E08 error pops up. But no worries, because as I was unpacking the motor controller, it happened to include a manual which shows the meaning for the errors. Here we can see that it says E08 means that there is a problem with the throttle. So to fix it, I just soldered the wires coming from the throttle and it worked. The error is gone. I guess I should have soldered it in the first place. But the question is, does the motor spin? Well, it's definitely trying. So to fix this, I'll once again play around with the wires until I get it right. It does work now, but it's going backwards. There we go. Now that it works, I'll solder all the connections and then wrap it in shrink tubing. Before closing everything up, I will connect the two brake sensor wires to these two yellow wires which are coming from the brakes. 
and as we can see, as soon as I pull the brakes, the motor stops accelerating even though the throttle is engaged. Alright, time to close everything up. Now before taking it for a test, I do want to show you the few settings for the display that can ultimately speed up your e-bike. To enter the settings menu, we first have to press both the plus and minus button for 2 to 3 seconds. The first setting is P01, in which we are able to adjust the brightness from the display from 1 to 3. I'll set it to 3 so I should be able to see it better against the sun. The next one is P02 which allows you to change it from miles per hour to kilometers an hour. Next is P03 which is where we can change the voltage range, in this case it's 48 volts. After this I'll skip over to P06 that is where you can enter your wheel diameter. In this case it's 14 inches which will help the speedometer be more accurate. The final settings I'll mess with is P08 which is the speed limiter. It can be set from 0 to 100 kilometers an hour. And yes, this is only kilometers an hour, so you'll have to google the calculation. But now that we're finally done, let's take it for a test drive. If you like this video then make sure to hit that subscribe button and consider supporting me through Patreon where you can have early access to my new videos and I will see you guys in the next video.